What's up guys, thanks for tuning in, this is Svet and today is actually a very great day for me because I'm starting a new series of video tutorials that I'm going to be uploading in YouTube and what I'm going to be teaching you in those videos guys is everything that you need to know about photography slash videography. I'm going to give you all the tools that you need in order to learn how to work with your camera, how to create composition, lighting, everything that you need in order to become a good photographer or videographer so you can finally go out there and start making money by doing something that you love. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about guys as part of this series is what is Aperture? Alright guys, I understand this subject is a little bit intimidating for some of you because it appears a little bit confusing but trust me, it's so so simple and if it's explained to you correctly you'll be like pff, pff, as simple as that. So let me break it down and show you what Aperture is and how it works. So take a lens and look straight through the glass you will see this variable size hole that opens and closes and what it does is actually controls the amount of light going inside of your camera. So why is that important? Well, when you work in different lighting conditions, you want to be able to control the amount of light going into your camera. Because for example, if you work outside in a very sunny day, too much light will blow out your image. So this is when you want to close your aperture. And if you work in a close environment and you don't have that much access to light, you want to open the aperture so more light is introduced to your camera so you can see more details on your image. And I know guys, many of you are probably going to judge me and say something like, well, you can also control the exposure by adjusting the shutter speed and the ISO, my friend. Well, yes, that's true guys, but that's not what this video is for, so let's stay on point and let's talk about aperture. So remember guys, the bigger the opening of the aperture, the more light will be introduced to the camera and the smaller the opening of the aperture, the less light will be added to the camera. So this was the first most important function of the aperture, but there is another very important function and this is the so-called depth of field. I know it's a little bit confusing for some of you, so let me break it down and show you what depth of field is. So let's say you set up your camera and now you're ready to work. Now draw an imaginary horizontal line from your camera forward ahead and position multiple objects in front of the camera in a different distance from the camera on the horizontal line. Now if you look through the camera, you're gonna see that some of those objects are in focus and some are not and this is where you determine your depth of field. What that means is that you actually determine how many objects on the horizontal line or how much from the horizontal line to be in focus and how much to be blurred. And this is based on what kind of project you work on or what kind of final effect you're trying to accomplish. For example, guys, if you take a picture of an object with a big importance, you concentrate the focus on that object by blurring the background behind it because you want this object to pop out from the background. And this is the case when your depth of field is shallow. And on the other side, if for example, you want to take a picture of a landscape and you want everything to be in focus, then in this case, the depth of field is deeper. So now guys, in order to determine how much depth of field you want to work with, this is represented by the letter F or the so-called F-stop. And the F-stop can vary as low as 1 all the way up to 4 depending on what kind of lens you use and what kind of project you're trying to accomplish. So how the F-stop works in relation to the depth of field? Remember guys, the more information you have in focus, the bigger the number will be and the less information you have in focus, the smaller the number will be. And this is where people get a little bit confused because when we talk about the relation between the opening of the aperture and the f-stop number, most of us assume that, well, the bigger the opening of the aperture is, the bigger the f-stop number will be. Well, that's not the case. It's actually the opposite. So remember guys. The bigger the opening of the aperture, the more light will be introduced to the camera, the smaller the f-stop will be and the shallower the depth of field. And the opposite, the smaller the opening of the aperture, the less light will be introduced to the camera, the bigger the f-stop will be and the deeper the depth of field. So this is it guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope it wasn't that difficult but if you still think it's kind of a complicated subject, just watch the video over and over again and you will see how it's gonna start making so much more sense. And by the way guys, I'm gonna be uploading a second video in which I'm gonna be showing you guys how to use the aperture on your camera so now when you know what aperture is you can start practicing and you can become pro. So I'm probably gonna post like a thumbnail somewhere here or I'm gonna add it to the description. So if you see it guys, check it out. So this is it guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do and you want me to create some more content, please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.